Hi everybody, welcome back to our channel. I'm Nicole, this is Shermie, and you are couch surfing with the Surfer Jets. So we thought we'd hop on here today to talk to you a little bit about our vintage Harmony Bobcats. We have matching ones. Mm -hmm. Um, the Bobcat was a guitar that you could purchase from the Sears catalog in the 1960s. I'm sure a lot of kids were lucky enough to get one of these for Christmas. Uh, at that time, they were budget friendly. Uh, they aren't budget friendly now, don't get me wrong on that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they're really neat guitars and we're going to talk to you a little bit about how we came to have them and a little bit of our personal histories with mm -hmm. them. So this right here is a 1964 Harmony H17 Bobcat. It's a beautiful burst. Here's the back of it. Um, I got this, I want to say like 2016-ish uh, from Reverb.com and I think it was Thunder Road Guitars in Seattle that was selling it. And yeah, I bought it because Shermie had a Bobcat already and I thought it was really cool vintage guitar and I was in the market for vintage guitars to add to my collection and these have been kind of popping up all over the place lately I would say. I think they're kind of popularized by St. Vincent and a lot of people like see these and really want them so I thought I'd get in there too. Yeah, I love it. It's super lightweight, like it's just really easy to hold and to play. So I've played this guitar live exactly one time. That's the exact right amount of time, I think. It, yeah, it doesn't really stay in tune. The intonation is not good, but it just, it sounds so good. And the gig that I played it at, I had to, because for my costume, I was a bobcat. <laughs> um, Shermie's friend Jackie did my makeup, like a bobcat, and I wore like leopard print and matched the guitar and it was, was very pretty, clever was and epic. funny. We'll, we'll, we'll uh, <laughs> put pictures up. So ever since I bought this I've noticed the headstock has these weird like little, I don't know, like little pinpricks in them on the top here and on one of the tuners and I've always wondered like what caused that? I don't understand. Like, And then actually not too long ago I was at my mom's house and I brought this guitar just to practice on and she has two cats and I'm sitting there practicing and one of the cats just comes up beside me on the table and just starts biting and chewing <laughs> on the headstock and the same tuner and I was like oh so, <laughs> some cat in the 1960s <laughs> must have also thought that this headstock was a really good toy <laughs> <laughs> so I think I got mine in 2015 I needed a surf like guitar because we started the Surfer Jets and I didn't have one yet and I I actually can't think of how I came across these guitars. I've racked my brain and I can't remember but it must have been something to do with St. Vincent as well. Like she's she's been very popular for using that guitar. So mm -hmm. I started looking them up. I had no idea what I was doing. I knew nothing about guitars. So I reached out to Michael Adams out of the blue. You might know of him. He is a guitar aficionado and a fixer. On, <laughs> he's on YouTube and Instagram, but I didn't even know him and I reached out and he was super kind and he pointed me in the right direction and he answered all my questions and I ended up buying this guitar online as well and it ended up working out really great. This guitar served me really well for the first years of the Surfer Jets. Um, yeah, I can't ask any more of it. However, <laughs> the intonation is terrible. I can't even get around saying that. It's all the fault of this little wooden bridge here at the bottom. It's a fixed bridge, so there's not too much you can do to adjust that. You can kind of move it around to try to get the best of the worst, but it's still the worst. <laughs> and I have some old live footage to prove that. <laughs> but anyways, I, I have upgraded since, but I still love this guy for what he is. and. You know, we could have spent all this money to try to, you know, make it better, but I just wanted to leave the integrity in the guitar and just leave it the way that it was and leave it original. It has some uh, battle scars from it originally. I may probably add it to it, but <laughs> I do love that. I think it really adds to the personality of the guitar, and I believe mine was from 1967. 
This is actually um, from the Color Cat line. This wasn't just a Bobcat, this was a Color Cat. So it is a fancy color and it was like a more deluxe model. So it has some upgrades on it. It has this fancy uh, vibrato system on it, which is just a bolt-on piece of metal, mm -hmm. but it actually sounds great. It works great. And yeah, it's, I, I actually have dots. <laughs> Oh I, yeah, this <laughs> doesn't have dots on the side of the neck, which I didn't realize was important to my guitar playing until, <laughs> until you didn't have them. I didn't have them. <laughs> sure, me as the deluxe model. Yeah. <laughs> dots <say> included. <laughs> um, I believe this guitar started my obsession with gold foil pickups. This one has the Diarmond mustache style. Uh, but ever since I've had this guitar, every other guitar I've gotten, I've had them put in just because I love the warm tones of them mm -hmm. and I just, I just love them. <laughs> so now we're going to play a song for you on these guitars. It's called Cha Cha Heels. It's an original song by the two of us and hope you enjoy it. Thanks for joining us and hope you tune in next time.